Hi, everyone. We're just waiting one more minute uh, for everyone to show up. And uh, after that minute elapses, we will get started. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be monitoring chat throughout. So uh, feel free to ask or let us know if there are any technical difficulties, if you can't see us or can't hear us, or anything like that. Um, but we'll just mute our, oh, well, I guess we'll get started, actually, because it's 2 o'clock. OK. So uh, I'm Maureen Babb. And I'm Angela Osterreicher. And uh, we're presenting today on Keeping Current, so strategies to help you keep abreast of, of what's going on in your areas. Um, in terms of the objectives that we'll be going through and hoping to cover in this seminar is that we'll be briefly introducing the WRHA Virtual Library and what we do. Uh, we'll describe multiple ways of keeping current. Um, we'll dis and we'll go into some of them in detail. Um, and it, again, if you have any questions or want anything in more detail while we're presenting, feel free to let us know um, just in the little chat box there. Um, we're also going to describe how the WRHA virtual library can be used to help you keep current. And uh, we'll discuss how to personalize your strategies for keeping current. I'm also going to apologize for my voice, but that's that's how it is today. Mm -hmm. So, um, And I'll, I'll mention that to, we generally aim for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and we will be sending out the deck slide, uh, slide deck uh, and posting this webinar so that if uh, your colleagues have missed it and are interested, they can view it as well. Yeah. So the WRHA Virtual Library, uh, we exist to serve the WRHA staff, uh, eligible community health agencies, as well as eligible personal care homes. And we are an electronic service library, so we have uh, electronic databases as well as an assortment of access to journal articles as well as books. And we still provide the general library services that we always have, which are literature searches, document delivery, which is very important for you because if we don't have access to the full text, we can still get the articles for you. And we'll do a variety of education and training sessions, such as the webinars. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, I want you guys, as you're going through this, to think about how you keep up to date. What are you doing right now? Are you finding it's working? Are you here because um, you're hoping to find something better? Or, uh, you know, just sort of think about that as you're going through. Think about how you could incorporate this into any of your own personal strategies. Um, you probably don't have a little newsboy running at you telling you the latest in your field, but you know, if you do, that's great. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different strategies that you can use. Uh, the first one is journal alerts. So you probably have a couple of favorite journals that you like to check out. Um, and most journals, though not all of them, offer journal alerts. Um, these usually mean they email you a table of content when they have a new issue, or if it's one of the journals that updates article by article, they'll email you whenever there's a new article. Um, you can, once you have that in your email, you can look for the names of the articles that you're interested in on the WRHA virtual library and get access to them that way, or order them if we don't have direct access to them. Um, when you're looking for how to set up a journal alert, it's usually at the bottom of a page. So you can see here on this slide, um, I've got the bottom of a BMJ uh, journal here, I think it was Thorax, and you can see right there, sign up for email alerts. Um, so that's an example of what they look like. It's not always super obvious, um, but if you do a control F on the main page of a journal you're interested in, and that's fine, control F, um, you can get access, you can look for alerts or emails or um, any of those sorts of terms, and you'll usually find the thing. Um, it's usually free. There are a few journals, though I personally haven't encountered them, uh, that do require you to pay for these kind of updates, um, or be a member, or so on and so forth. But usually it's, it's just you sign up. Um, so there are some advantages to this. Uh, one, you already know the journal. You're already reading it. You already have a good sense of the quality, and you get to keep up to date as the journal updates, so you're right on top of things. Um, some of the disadvantages of this might be that there are too many email alerts, that what you're getting in the email alerts isn't always relevant, and that um, 
as I said, it might not always be free and that uh, often the journal alerts, at least I've found, they include things that aren't necessarily just the table of contents, just the latest updates. Sometimes there's a lot of noise, um, like there's a lot of editorials or a lot, or they'll send you the same news piece five times a week or something like that. And sometimes you can change those in your settings and sometimes you can't. Um, one of the other things that's very similar is uh, association, so professional association alerts or newsletters. Um, most of you belong to some professional organizations, as do we. Um, so, <coughs> pardon me. Um, as I said, my voice is a little bit mm -hmm. uh, terrible today. Um, so I apologize for that. But in terms of these associations, most of your associations will have some sort of newsletter or mailing list or something. Sometimes you're auto signed up for that when you join the organization. A lot of times you're not. We're a member of um, the American, or we know of the American Library Association. I'm not sure if we're members. I'm not. Are you? No. Um, but they have a number of mailing lists that you can sign up for, um, that I'm signed up for even though I'm not a member. Um, and you can just find that on the site. Um, and so this can often include information beyond journal articles. It can include calls for papers, alerts about conferences that in your area or that you might be interested in, uh, notifications about webinars, and it will also include information um, like gray literature, so news reports or reports in general. Um, some of them will also have listservs slash email discussion groups um, that are available. This is often a good way to connect and network with people and to see what everybody's talking about in your field. Um, now, there are some disadvantages with this. Uh, one of the things with association alerts in particular is that it's very easy to get overwhelmed, especially if it's one of those email discussion lists. Um, I just yesterday unfollowed two uh, listservs that I was a member of because it was too many people just talking back and forth about subjects I did not care about. Um, and again, that's another thing. What's in these may or may not be relevant to you. Hopefully, if it's in your area, it'll ultimately be relevant to you. Um, and I think with medicine, you get a lot of, or with health, you get a lot of very specific uh, associations, which will probably be beneficial to you. Um, one of the other things to watch out for, particularly in the discussion groups and the gray literature, is that the information you're getting may not be peer reviewed, it may be more opinion based, it may not be the best of the best information. Um, so do be aware of that and keep an eye out for it, but if you're finding this useful, again, it's a great way to network, it's a great way to find that information that isn't really found very anywhere else. Um, and one of the things that I didn't mention on here that often shows up on these sorts of mailing lists is job advertisements. So if you're looking to, to move, uh, then that's a good place to look as well. Um, now, many databases will have the option to build uh, alerts. Uh, Google and Google Scholar both allow you to set up alerts. Um, so this can be on specific topics. Uh, whatever your search, whatever detail to which you've done the search, you can build your uh, your alert based on this. So these alerts are emails that can be sent to you as information appears, um, which I personally wouldn't recommend with Google and Google Scholar just because there's so much. So unless you're following some sort of disease outbreak and you need up to the minute information, I would say, you know, only once a week or only once a day for these sorts of alerts. Um, Google is great for non-academic topics. It's great for fast breaking topics. It's great for topics on which there isn't a lot of uh, scholarly literature, information that's very, very new. Um, and it's great for uh, people, like if you're wanting to keep track of a, a particular scholar or a particular doctor. Um, Google Scholar is very similar, but it's a little bit more academic. It's academic-ish. I put that in there because Google Scholar is not curated. It pulls in resources that um, the Google algorithms think look academic. So a lot of times it's it's not only papers that are published by people, but also their their presentations, their slideshows, um, which may or may not be academics. And the most important thing to remember about Google and Google Scholar is that 
your alert is only as good as the search that you've built. Um, so uh, we can certainly help you build a better search. Um, and we had a webinar mm -hmm. a while back on uh, uh, How to better Google. Googling. Yeah. I forget what we called it. It is it's about Googling. It's available on our website, um, which can give you some tips and tricks on how to construct and tighten up your search. But certainly you can give us an email and say like, hey, I'm looking for stuff on this topic and I'm getting like thousands of results and I need something that's not going to give me that. Um, in terms of Google versus Google Scholar, I tend to use only Google Scholar alerts. If I was using a Google alert, it would only be for very, very specific things um, that are unlikely to be worded differently. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to go through some examples of this. So this is how you set up a Google alert. Um, if you go to google.ca slash alerts, feel free to follow along while we're doing this. Um, you'll see something like this. Now you may be logged in. If you're logged in and you set up an alert, that's great. You can edit them later. Um, and we're logged in on this screen capture as the WRHA virtual library. If you're not logged in, you can still set something up um, and you can still have it sent to your email, but you can't edit it later. Um, so if you've got one of those alerts that just throws you tons of noise, um, that's when you would want to be able to edit it and say, oh, whoa, no, this is way too much. Um, you'll see at the bottom of that screen there, at the Google alert screenshot, um, you'll see that, uh, that um, there are these, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse on here or not, but at the bottom there are alert suggestions. So this is, these are pre-built searches. I've never used any of these. I don't know how good they are. Um, I would personally be skeptical of them and would rather build my own. But I mean, maybe if you wanted a very broad picture of science, uh, it would be a good one to, to add that science to your alert. Um, but if you're building your own search, you can start putting it in there. And you'll see, uh, I've, I've clicked on, there was show options. And so now you can see these options that I could hide if I clicked hide options. So I've done a search here for mad cow disease. And then you can see how often you want it at most once a day. Um, the sources, uh, and there are different you know, languages, regions. So you could limit it only to Winnipeg, only to Canada. Um, now how effective that is, is how effective the data going into Google is. So it might it might not be as effective as you would hope. Um, only the best results that's based again on Google's algorithm, uh, you know, when you do a search and it's uh, relevance based, that's uh, that's what's going on there. Um, you can see here, I've done a search for mad cow disease. Now this is not a very specific search, but this is, what I'm talking about. So the first two are dealing with mad cow disease, but the third one is just 80s slang. Mm -hmm. Congressman Devin Nunez is having a cow, and then predictably the cows went mad in response. Well, that's, you know, that's that's not at all what you're looking for. Um, so if you'd put mad cow disease in quotes, that would have narrowed it down, but not necessarily as much as you would need. Um, so that's. Uh, that's, I'm just sort of moving the question box out so I can see if there are any questions. Okay, so that's how you set up a Google alert. Uh, again, www.google.ca slash alerts, put in the search you want, create alert, and then if you're logged in, you can go back and edit it later if it's not turning up what you want. And again, we will be help, happy to help you with those ones. Um, Google Scholar alerts, uh, if you go to Google Scholar, so www.scholar.google.ca, um, you can just put in a search. As you can see, I have done a generic search. Um, and then you, uh, once you've found a search you like and you're like, yes, these are the results, the generic search results that I would like, um, you click this create an alert button. And it's the same thing basically after that as the Google Scholar alert. You just put in your email and it'll send it there. Um, one of the other things to consider in a more informal way, sorry again, <coughs> to stay up to date on, 
on information is blogs, podcasts, webinars. Obviously, you guys are the attending webinars type. Um, as we mentioned, you can find out about uh, webinars often in those association uh, newsletters or uh, even company newsletters. Um, if you're particularly interested in knowing how a certain product works, often they'll do webinars as well. Um, but uh, you can also find blogs that same way. Um, and you can, of course, just find these with, with a gene general search, but often it can be hard to find the best quality ones. Um, so there are blogs that may be run by professionals, but they may not be um, podcasts, webinars, um, and podcasts and webinars are great because it's for once you're not reading something. Um, it's a it's a different way to learn. You could, you know, be working on something else while you're listening to a podcast or watching a webinar. Um, it just gives you a little bit of variation. And particularly if you're not, if you're a more auditory or more visual learner, this might be a better way for you to know things. Um, Webinars in particular uh, may cost money or they may be free. Um, if you have any sort of professional development fund, you may be able to use that towards uh, watching webinars. Um, and you'll note I've got here one of the toolkits up and many of our toolkits uh, provide links to podcasts and or blogs uh, that we know to be decent. <laughs> um, and if you think that we've that there's one that you really like that we've missed in your area, um, feel free to send us a note about it and we'll look into it and possibly add it to our toolkits for, for others to enjoy. And hopefully you've signed up for our blog, the WHA Virtual Library blog, so that way you'll know. Yeah, we yeah, we, we keep up, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we keep up information on there about what's going on. Um, as with uh, anything that you're getting through these, uh, any of these updates, make sure as you're reading them that you're critically applying appraising them. Um, if you're listening to a podcast, you know, don't take it at face value. Uh, if it sounds fishy, look into it. Um, but that that's just true in general. And one assumes that you guys as professionals uh, do do that. Um, so one of the other ways that I'm not going to dwell on too much, but are is social media. So we've got here just some of the various social medias, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Instagram. Um, I'm not sure. I, I was actually going to say before this webinar that I'm not sure how good Pinterest would be for finding information, but I was just doing a search for videos. And it turns out a lot of organizations um, in health place collections of their videos up on Pinterest. So it turns out mm -hmm. it is a decent resource for finding some of this stuff. Um, you can keep in touch with your, uh, with your colleagues. You can have discussions. You can often join groups. Um, one of the things to watch out for is that sort of work-life divide. Um, and I would recommend perhaps having a professional and a personal version of your social media. Mm -hmm. um, and that can help separate things out. Uh, you also want to be, I would say, particularly wary of information that's transmitted over social media. I mean, in the news, we've seen a lot of information about how uh, algorithms affect what you see, and you may be getting a lot of misinformation, and that is certainly true. Um, now, there are two other uh, apps on here that I've uh, illustrated that are not um, social media. Um, one of them is browsing and browsing is a reader app so it collects, you can build bookshelves and you can collect things um, like collect journals that you're interested in following or subjects that you're interested in following and you can put it onto your phone and look at uh, the resources that you're interested in looking at. I'm not talking about it in detail because we at the WRHA Virtual Library don't have a subscription uh, to browsing, but you can use it on open access resources. So it's very visual. So yeah. It's like you actually see a bookshelf, you actually see the journal Yeah, cover, the journal book. And, and then you can pick on it. And you can open it up, read yeah, the articles. And browse. Through. Um, the other one that I've got there, which is Read by QXMD, I will be talking about in more detail because, exciting, we just got it. Um, so the WRHA Virtual Library is now affiliated, like we, we have an institutional access 
uh, to read by QXMD. And like browsing, it's one of those reader aggregation apps. So you can read, subscribe, and keep track of multiple journals, multiple keywords. It's specifically how science is based. Um, and so when you're subscribing to it, you can receive alerts when there's new content. Uh, you can personalize it as you see fit. Um, when you connect with the WRHA Virtual Library Institutional Access, you can access the resources directly that would otherwise be paywalled uh, through your WRHA Virtual Library account. Um, and again, anything that you can't access but you can still see on read uh, is something that you can order through us and we'll send it to you. Um, so this is available both on mobile devices and on desktop. Um, I personally find it too small to use on my phone, but uh, if you have a tablet or if you're on desktop, then you can do it. Um, you can share articles with colleagues. You can export to uh, reference managers like EndNote or Mendeley. Um, so I'm just going to go through sort of the setup process. There's this getting set up is quick uh, image here, which if you go to our WRHA virtual library blog, uh, this information is there as well. Um, so uh, this is the desktop version that I'll be walking you through this. Um, when you're signing up, um, make sure that you've selected the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority virtual library. Um, so if you just go to the read uh, by QXMD website, uh, this is where you can begin and you can start signing up. You put in your profession. Um, and so uh, you, put, you select your library. Um, and then once you've got an account either on desktop or on mobile, you can sync across devices. So it's not like you can only use it on, on one device. Um, once you've signed up, it gives you some suggestions to follow. You can also do some searches for your favorites. Uh, you can see there the follow button, so you just click those if you want to follow them. Um, you can add keywords manually. Um, and keywords, unlike searches, should be fairly general. Um, so it should be, you know, diabetes or type 1 diabetes or, um, you know, it can be the specific name of a disease, but it shouldn't be, you know, this and this and this and this and this because it isn't built like that. Um, this is what it looks like once you've signed up. This is their featured papers, and you can see that they show you if something is promoted, it's kind of yellow. They show you if it's a review or an editorial, um, and then you can see across the top, you've got my followed journals, my followed collections, my followed keywords. So journals are journals that you've chosen to follow. Collections are collections on specific topics that have been built by other people or that you can build yourself. Um, and my followed keywords are the same thing that we were talking about before. Um, so that's, uh, once you've started following uh, uh, journals, you can access the articles. Clicking on an article, at least in the desktop version, looks like this. Um, the mobile version is pretty sleek too. Um, and so at the bottom, there's this read this article, and if you click on this, it pulls up that list of options that we've got there. So PDF, full text, PubMed. Um, so if you click on those, uh, most, like this one's freely available, so if you went to PubMed, it would show you the full text. But there's one there from EBSCOhost, and if you click on that one, that will take you to the WRHA virtual library version. So there might be ones that were not otherwise available that you would need to access through the virtual library, and then that'll take you to the login page. And you can log in there, and then access it through the virtual library. And again, if you don't have access to it, just order sources through our web page, remember the information that you have here, or export it to your uh, citation manager so that you can look at it later. Um, oh, yes, there's the part that I was highlighting that I suppose I could have um, pressed that button. Uh, so I'll pass it off to Angela oh. to talk about how the WRHA virtual library yes. can help with this. You can go to the next slide there. Oh, yes, I suppose I can. So uh, we do do several things to help you keep current. One of them is we've continued with uh, our current perspective bibliographies. Not sure if you're familiar with our old setup. When we were at the J.W. Crane Memorial Library, we had a current perspective series uh, specifically for long-term care, and we're using that same format 
and we've uh, reproduced some of those bibliographies for long-term care, but we're also able to do that in any topic. So they're just short bibliographies. I think they're like one page. And if there's any topic that you really exactly. think we should be keeping up to date on, um, that we should be having a current perspective bibliography for, uh, send us an email. Yeah. We'll, yeah. So hopefully by now you, you know enough to bookmark our website. Uh, we've put it up there again. That one takes you specifically to our current awareness page. Uh, it's located otherwise under the services tab. And that's where you'll find the current perspective series. And you can see some of the titles there, brain injury rehabilitation, uh, communicating with dementia patients, uh, continence in the elderly, uh, a little further down, we have medical marijuana, which is our recently new hot topic, uh, mindfulness. So we're looking for topics that you need to be updated regularly on. And also we have some other boxes there, how to do a, an alert in PubMed, as well as other general ideas about keeping current, which Maureen has just gone over. Yeah. Um, so current awareness alerts are, are something else that we can do for you. It's basically a literature search uh, that we can do for you on a topic uh, of your interest, or we can also do it by journal. So even though, even if we don't subscribe to a journal, but they're for your particular uh, subject area, if there are certain titles that you want to keep up to date to, with, we can set that up for you. Well, actually, we can do it two ways. We, you can do the search yourself, and we can give you the instructions on how to set it up as an alert, or we can construct the search for you, uh, especially if it's a topic one, it might be more involved. You can yeah. use our services. And again, we'll send you the search strategy, uh, we'll send you instructions on how to set up the alert. Some it will pick the best database for you. Uh, if it's nursing, it would be CINAHL. If it's uh, more medically oriented, it might be PubMed or Medline. Uh, if it's a drug, drug related, we might pick Embase. So what we would do is construct the search for you, tell you how to set it up as an alert, and then you can ha actually have new information come to you on a scheduled uh, basis so and you could decide whether it's daily whether it's weekly bi-weekly monthly yeah and this is similar to the google alerts i talked about earlier um, but we'll help you build the searches so we we do have that available and that's for any database that we subscribe to that itself allows for mm -hmm. the setup mm -hmm. of of um and the idea is you'll get a you know depending on the topic, you might, we might have to uh, change the parameters of the search if you're getting too many hits or not enough hits. But the idea is for you just to scan those and, and see if any, yeah. any of the titles are of interest to you. It's not the idea isn't for you to read all 30 articles that happen to pop up or all 100 articles, but the idea is for you to scan quickly through the list and see if any of them are of interest to you. And then you would check to see if we have full text to it, and if not, you would order the article from yes. us. So when those arrive in your inbox, um, they'll be either just the title and information about the article, or the title information and abstract. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what you'd be scrolling through. Yeah. I personally use these. I have about five alerts set up um, for uh, my research interests, yeah. and it's very useful, particularly for topics on which there isn't a lot of information, and you just want to make sure that you have absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. as close to absolutely. Yeah. Everything and I have several can. alerts as well for my research yeah. interests, and what I do is sometimes I don't have time to read it right away. Another thing that I do, it's not part of this webinar, but is to use yes. some of the citation bibliographies. Uh, Mendeley, EndNote, and then you could just dump the citation into the file in yeah. one of those, and at a later date, read it later. Is it? Yeah. So we've mentioned several times another way to keep up to date. We do literature searches. So at any time, you can request a literature search on any topic. We, as librarians, would decide which databases to search in. We'll search a variety of databases, different catalogs. We'll execute the search on your behalf. Uh, we can search resources that are not that are not available just through the WRHA virtual library. So if you were to do the search yourself, you would only have access to the databases that we subscribe to you for. We also 
as librarians have access to the U of M databases. So we'll go beyond the WHA uh, virtual library uh, resources and search uh, the topic for you. And so then, of course. Yeah. What we would do is provide you with a list of what we find, usually as a Word document. Mm -hmm. Again, we'd give you the title and the abstract if it's available. Again, we might have 20, 30, maybe even more, depending how broad you want us to search. And the idea is for you to read all the things. Again, it's a resource that you can scan through and decide which articles are of interest to you. Uh, and then go into our library system and check to see if those are available full text to you or not. Uh, if we don't, and at any time, if we don't have the full text, you can still get the article. Uh, and that's called our document delivery service. So you would do that uh, right from the catalog. Uh, you can usually order information, but if you're not in the catalog, if you go to our website, under services, order sources, you can pull up a request form and request either books, articles, or other resources like videos. And in which case, our library technicians will then source out where they can find that if we don't actually own uh, the resource through the U of M or through the WHA. They will go to other libraries and see if they can get a copy of that article or borrow that book for you and it would be sent directly to you. A lot of times the uh, articles are sent by email, uh, otherwise we'll mail the books to you. Yep, um, so I'm just going to make a note here. We're at 2.31, so we've gone a little over. There's uh, two more slides here. Um, and so if you want to stick around, it won't be that much longer. If you can't, that's okay. We'll be posting this webinar up online later, and we'll be emailing the slides to everybody who registered uh, to this uh, session. Um, but for right now, I'm going to talk about very briefly about personalization and keeping it manageable. So there are all these different strategies. Um, maybe it would work for you to use all of them, but I know for me, I like to use one or two of them. Um, and I, I, one of the biggest struggles for me is that it's, it's very easy to overload, um, especially if you're subscribed to some sort of list or some sort of alert that is giving you just tons of information and background noise. Now, if it's an alert you've constructed, you can change it to be more meaningful to you. If it's one of the list serves or one of the mailing lists that you're a part of and it's just not useful, that's okay. You can just leave. Um, and I, I know that that sounds like a strange thing to say, but sometimes people need to hear that you can have permission to stop looking at this, that it's not that important, that you can just boot it out of your inbox. Um, and that can be very helpful in making sure that you do stay abreast of what you need to stay abreast of. Um, and the other thing to remember is that what works best for you isn't necessarily the same thing as what works best for your friend or your colleague. Um, so for me, I find the email alerts are very effective. I'm a little bit on the fence about whether or not Twitter is effective, um, but I'm using it for now. Um, I don't know what Angela prefers. Um, well, I've used Twitter in the past. Mm -hmm. We used it quite effectively for work purposes. Uh, we had Jerry News, which was had mm -hmm. over 2,000 followers at one point, and all we were doing was rebroadcasting news pieces on long-term care. Yeah, yeah, and like I, I have a Twitter that I use to keep up on sort of the librarian conversations that are happening um, around the world, and you know, maybe that's the most effective way for you. Maybe you'd rather just get those updates in your inbox. Um, experiment, reevaluate, maybe try it one at a time so that you're not overwhelming yourself and just being like, this is all terrible. I'm only going to conferences, that's it. Um, and then the other thing is that you're allowed to skim mm -hmm. and you're allowed to not like a format. If you hate webinars, that's your business. Um, if you hate podcasts, that's fine. Um, if you hate journal articles, also fine. Um, so that's basically it for this. Mm -hmm. uh, we will stick around for a bit if anybody has any questions, um, whether it's about strategies in general or about specific uh, strategies in more detail. Uh, we will stay here. We're just going to mute ourselves for a little bit so that I can go off screen and cough. But if you have any questions, we will uh, 
uh, still be here um, for a bit. So, so type away. Thank you very much. Yes, for thank you for attending and apologies again for my voice. Okay, hi, we just got a question. Um, can you explain where to find the various webinars done to date on the website? So I'll just open up our uh, website here. Um, if you can't see it, let me know, um, but I'll walk you through it as well. So if you go here and to um, services, library training, and then on this library training page, right here, there's watch past education sessions, and they're all here. Um, so introduction to the virtual library, learning PubMed, effective Googling. Um, so there's that one that can help you build the search, um, evidence-based practice and levels of evidence, finding guidelines and healthcare apps. Uh, our next one coming up in April is critical appraisal. You should show them um, our blog. Yes, I will show them our <laughs> blog. Um, so we also have our blog over here, um, which is where we post, you know, new information. So here's the information about READ by QXMD that I was talking about, and um, new webinars when we post them up after we've uh, let them sit, they show up here as well. So if you subscribe to our blog, then you'll be notified when as soon as they come sessions up. are coming yeah. up and when they've been posted. Yeah, um, you can also access this more directly from the homepage. Uh, here there's the, the newest webinar coming up, which this will be changed now that Keeping Current is completed. But there's read more about our education sessions and watch previous sessions here. And if you click on that, that will also take you directly there uh, to the, the training and instruction pages. Um, so uh, this is so cramped up, hang on. Uh, okay. Are there more questions? This is so. Oh, might be another question. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, we couldn't see the question super clearly. If it's not already set up, can you please start an autism pers current perspectives bibliography? Yeah, we can certainly mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. I will make a note of that yeah. right now. Um, Great suggestion. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh, yes, you're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, okay. Um, we'll just. Um, maybe I'll just mute us again until there are any more questions. We'll stay around a couple more minutes, and if everybody uh, heads off, then we'll uh, then we'll.
All right, that looks like there are no more questions, so we're going to just sign off. Um, if you did have a question, feel free to email us uh, with it later, and we apologize for cutting you off, but we are just going to head on out of here. Um, thank you for attending. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right, how do I make this stop? End webinar for